Hey everybody, Complete Pete back again, sitting in my buddy's brand new 2021 Grand Cherokee. He tried to install a set of the uh, LED retrofit bulbs in here. Um, uh, this fella bought actually two of these. Uh, they're one VIN number off on the assembly line. The first vehicle he installed them in, the LED lights were great. Uh, this vehicle, he put a set of bulbs in and they flicker. Um, I would say that this vehicle is designed to have a halogen bulb in it. Um, you know, these are aftermarket bulbs. You might want to check your local laws and things like that. I know some people have strong feelings about glare and, and things like that. And, and I'm not going to get into that. I'm just helping somebody out. So I wanted to take a little bit of time. From what I'm told, and I have, I have been in his vehicles when they had the halogen bulbs, and I've been in them after he put the LED bulb in, and I will say the light output is awesome. It is really nice, really a big step up, because the, vehicle, uh, the vehicles are hard to get these days, and, and he couldn't get one with the LED bulbs in it. Um, he dropped off the box just so I could see what it is. It's the LazFit Pro LED lighting kit. He tells me he loves these people. He... Uh, I've never used these myself, but he loves them. He says the uh, customer, uh, customer care is awesome. Uh, they get back to them right away. Any issues, they take care of it. That's kind of hard to find these days, so I, I guess that's a pretty good uh, reference. Um, this is the Pro Series, uh, and it's 50-watt uh, bulbs. Uh, color temperature is 6,000K, so it's a pure white. I uh, got a two-year wa warranty on them, and this is the uh, the Pro Series LazFit. So this is specifically designed for the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee. I've seen the bulbs go in before, different brands. You have to take the dust cover off the back of the uh, that the uh, headlight bulb bucket, and uh, the covers never fit back on because a lot of these LED bulbs are fan cooled. There's a little fan mounted on the back, so the dust covers never go back on. And you really want to have some sort of dust cover on there because you don't want dirt getting in and reducing your light output. You don't want water, moisture getting in there. Um, so, I mean, this is what a dust cover looks like. So that's the dust cover that's on the back of, of most headlights. Uh, and when you put the, the LED bulb in, the, the uh, fan sticks out, you'll never get this cover back on. The nice thing about the, the LazFit is they send you a brand new dust cover for each one of the bulbs that's specifically cut out and it, and it maintains the water resistance and the dust resistance. Um, and I think it's probably one of the few brands that does that. So that's a real, that's a real great selling point for this product. To get started, the flickering is usually caused because this vehicle is a, uh, you know, has a CAN bus system and the LEDs are confusing the car because they require much less power than the standard halogen bulbs. So the computer is trying to send power, it's receiving you know, back the wrong signals, and it's just confusing everything. So that's what results in this, this annoying flickering. Um, and there's a couple ways to solve that problem. Uh, you can use resistors, uh, you can get a CAN bus adapter or, or similar depending on the issue you're having uh, to resolve it. We're not going to do any of that because we, we really want to be able to utilize the dust covers. What we're going to do is use the JSCAN software to change some of the vehicle settings to instruct the car to accept the voltages required by LED lights. And this is going to involve a few steps which we'll show you. Um, we purchased a Chrysler Security Bypass Cable. We purchased a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth OBD2 adapter. We got the Wi-Fi version um, and we need to download the JSCAN app. Now there are some other apps that may be capable of completing this task such as Alpha OBD but this video is only related to Jeep Grand Cherokee using JSCAN. Well here we are in the passenger seat footwell um, the connections and plugs that we need to work with are up under the uh, glove box. So we're going to start just popping down this piece of fabric covering that's covering the plugs that we want to get to. So I'll get started. I'm um, just using my little flashlight here. You can look up on top and you can see there's uh, three push pins. One, two, three. This one I started pulling down already. One, two, three. 
three. So I would say don't pull on the fabric material itself. You want to get your fingers, one finger on your side and pull down. That way you're not going to be replacing this material. Um, I think you're supposed to unplug all these wires and pull this thing out, but I'm, I think I'm just going to work around it. Uh, we can see all the plugs and connections up under the dash. And if you give me one second, I'll get set up and we'll, uh, we'll show you which ones to take apart. I ended up taking out that little uh, fabric cover after all, it was just kind of hard to get up in there. Um, and if you look up, you're going to see two small black connectors with multicolored wires sticking out of them. Uh, they're pretty easy to reach, you have to contort yourself a little bit under the dashboard, but they're going to pull just straight down. They're two different pin sizes, so we can't mix them up, so don't worry about marking them or anything like that. But uh, those are the two plugs, and I'm going to get under there and I'm going to pull them out for you. So we have our 8-pin and our 12-pin plugs pulled out. We just showed that. We have our adapter cable, the Chrysler uh, 12 plus 8 cable. Um, I'm going to take the 12-pin connector, and I'm going to plug it right into the 12-pin on the thing. It clicked in, no problem. Here's the 8-pin. This is very high-tech. Plug that right in. I have my glasses on. Okay, so that's it. Both are plugged in and we're ready to, to continue. Okay, now it's time to plug in our adapter and all compatible adapters are, are available on JSCAN's website. Uh, get this unpacked. There you go, iCar Pro. So there it is. You got a little circuit board inside. It's an inter part of the interface. And we're just going to plug this into our adapter. And we got a light. And it looks like we have some communication. Okay, on to the next step. The first thing we want to do is to put the vehicle in the run position. We want to open up the app. And we want to select our vehicle, which in our case is going to be the Grand Cherokee. Uh, WK2. It's a 2014 to 2020. There isn't a 2021 version, but it does work with this vehicle. We want to select our adapter, which in our case is going to be the V-Link. And we want to go to the uh, adaptations. And we want to go down to LED light settings. So in our case, we want to choose high intensity discharge headlamps present. want to make that active. So the changes will be accepted. It might take a minute or so for that to happen. The next thing we're going to do is scroll on down and we're going to go to the quad headlamps setting and we want to activate that. So once everything is done, we've made the changes, we have to turn the car off for at least 15 seconds and so the system can learn the changes. Um, and what's really cool about this adapter is that uh, I, I'd encourage you to go to the App Store, download you know, JSCAN, select your car in the app and just check out the demo for it because you can not only make these changes to these uh, your headlights, you can adjust air suspension, uh, door configurations, whether or not your mirrors fold in automatically, uh, all lighting in your vehicle, you can adjust performance settings, tire size changes, axle ratio changes, uh, trailer settings, vehicle maintenance tasks, uh, vehicle user settings, and, and much more. It just does a ton of things. Where I'm only using it for this one thing right now, but there's a lot of uh, potential for other changes. I plugged in our, our, uh, our light harness again, and now we're just gonna get this back up into place. Okay, 
that's one, that's two. This has got to go behind this cover. And that is three. Okay. Okay, we're back to rights. Okay, well, problem solved. Uh, we used our, our bypass cable, we used our communication tool, and uh, you know, between this cable and this adapter, the cable's 20 bucks, the adapter's $29, and I had to buy a license for this specific vehicle uh, based on the VIN code, so that, that's something to keep in mind. So for $82, we solved the problem, and I have the ability to make any changes I need for larger tires, axle ratio changes, anything. So I'm gonna hang on to this stuff and uh, use it for the next project. Thanks for watching.